So uh, we've reached the final chapter of your ebook on the new normal. We've all been reading this for the last 12 months. Now is the time to act. So I'd like to ask you, first of all, what can my company do to act now to succeed in this transition to the new normal? Well, I think you put your finger on the, the key issue here, Will, that you know, we've spent 12 months of our lives working on this issue. And what I think John Richardson and I are absolutely convinced about is that we're facing a different world. That the super cycle, 25 years from 1982 to 2007, more or less unbroken growth throughout the world, globalisation, outsourcing, all these things, has finished. So if I'm in a company today and I'm not aware of the changes that are being driven by demographics, the fact that a third of the Western world is now over 55, completely different needs, completely different lifestyle to when it was younger. If you look at the in many of the emerging economies, very similar challenges ahead of them because they've got to transition from export-led economies through to domestic. And let's not kid ourselves, a country like China, 96% of the population earns less than $20 a day. No matter what people tell us, this is not a middle class market. This is a market of very poor people by Western standards. So we have to get out there and we have to do in our companies things differently and think about things differently because the patterns that took us forward aren't there anymore. And that's why the economy of the world is going through such volatility and uncertainty. What about policy makers then? How can they change the system so that it works more effectively? A very simple thing. We've got to get back to thinking about the medium and long term. We want leaders, not people driven by focus groups and by sound bites. Why do all our politicians have 24 hour news cycle televisions in their in the, the White House, the Oval Office, in number, number 10 Downing Street and so on. What is it? What has this got to do with positioning a country and its people for prosperity over the next 10 and 20 years? We've got to get back to real genuine partnerships between companies and governments where we look at the areas where we need to be successful and we work out how we can do this and not how we win the next by-election or how we win that. That's not what people are talking about. We've got nowadays in the West, 80 years of life. So people who would have been dead at 50 have now got 30 years. You know, only 100 years ago you would have been dead at 50. That was life expectancy. Our system needs to change to go back to a world where people look forward and didn't just do what they thought everybody else wanted them to do. And what about us as individuals? You know, we're probably all worried now about um, the, the transition and what's going to come over the next decade or two. So what, what kind of challenges and opportunities are there for us as individuals? Well, I think this is the key thing that we've found, John and I, when we've done meetings and workshops and seminars around the world, that individuals grasp this message intuitively. They recognise there are challenges there as well as opportunities, but, but that's what life is about. They don't want a soft soap, don't worry, I'll sort it all out for you, you're just a child kind of approach. They say, look, I am alive, I'm an intelligent human being, I've got something to contribute here. And if I might close really for the whole, what have we learned from this over the last year and what we've done with the book, it's that social cohesion is absolutely critical for our countries in the future. And the only way we'll get social cohesion is if individuals take action for themselves, for their companies, and within their own countries. And if they do that, then we will maintain social cohesion and then we will, we will have challenges, but we will also focus on the opportunities. If we don't do that, if we all lie back passively and say it's no good, we're all doomed, then it fails. So really, this is a call to action. What can I do now that will make a difference? Maybe difficult, maybe small, but let's actually make a step forward and not just sink back in the armchair. Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you, Will.